Just as you learned with previous test statistics, it is customary to compute a measure of effect size if you have a statistically significant result and have been able to reject the null hypothesis. We again use Cohen's D and R squared as measures of effect size. The notation in the denominator of the Cohen's D formula requires a bit of explanation. Recall that in the previous formulas we used to compute Cohen's D, either the population or sample standard deviation was the value in the denominator. Think about what you're looking at here. Because we have two groups of subjects to consider in the independent samples t-test, we must pool the variance. And that is the notation you see in the denominator. But what it is telling us to do is to take the square root of that, correct? Remember how we calculate the standard deviation. We take the square root of the variance to get that value. Here, we are just taking the square root of the pooled variance. So conceptually, even though it looks different, we're st still doing the same thing. The R-squared formula works the same way. And just as for the single sample t-test, a customary next step, if you have a statistically significant test, is to compute an interval estimate. Shown on the slide is the confidence interval formula for the independent samples t-test. To start out, the point estimate is the difference between M1 and M2. That subtraction operation results in a single number that will serve as the point estimate. Then from that number we subtract, and to that number we add the product of the multiplication of the critical t value times the estimated standard error. If you have calculated an independent samples t-test, you will already have the point estimate value, as well as the estimated standard error value. Thus, you only have to locate the critical t value in the t-table. You follow the same process you learned in Chapter 9. You always use the two-tailed row, and the alpha level is related to the percent of confidence you are going for. The difference is how you select the correct degrees of freedom, and here, you use the same method as you use for the t-test. You add DF1 plus DF2 to get the total degrees of freedom, and you use that as your starting point. The last thing we're going to talk about is the concept of assumptions. Assumptions are kind of like stipulations for the record that you see occurring within legal proceedings. To go back to the legal analogy I used in Chapter 8. These are aspects about your distribution that researchers make sure are true before they compute the test statistic. In this class, you're just going to be introduced to the concept of assumptions and some of the associated terms. We won't be learning uh, those advanced tests. Those of you who will be taking advanced statistics will learn how to calculate the tests we use to verify the assumption. The key takeaway term for you on this slide is homogeneity of variance. One of the things we verify in the independent samples t-test is that the variance for each of our sample groups is approximately the same.